Hey, Dr. Michael Bowman here, dual board certified facial plastic surgeon and otolaryngologist or ENT uh, here with a five minute breakdown. That's where we take about five minutes to look into a topic that comes up frequently in my practice so we can learn a little more about it together. Uh, today's topic is uh, ENT and facial plastic surgery. How do they go together? As I mentioned before, I'm a dual board certified facial plastic surgeon as well as ENT, uh, otolaryngologist. And so it frequently comes up, you know, how did you get involved with doing facial plastic surgery? I didn't know that ear, nose, and throat doctors did that. So um, as otolaryngologists, our specialty evolved over the course of the years, like, um, like many other surgical subspecialties, uh, we became and special, one of our many specialties uh, is in head and neck cancer. And so uh, we deal with both resecting both the uh, primary tumors, meaning that the main cancer, as well as the lymph nodes and other adjunctive procedures associated with um, head and neck cancer. So this involved not only the skin, but the throat, tongue, um, you know, most of the uh, head, uh, the whole head and neck with the exception of you know, the brain and eyes. Um, and so we would uh, go in and uh, remove these cancers and initially um, otolaryngologists turned to their colleagues in plastic surgery to have them um, help reconstruct the patient. Um, over time, uh, Ian, we incorporated that into our field and so now all uh, otolaryngologists as they emerge from their training um, are absolutely trained in and well experienced in um, both basic as well as more advanced reconstruction of facial defects um, including things like free flaps where you take a piece of tissue say from your uh, forearm or your leg and move it up into the uh, neck, tongue, throat, uh, face, wherever it need be and you can use that tissue to help uh, reconstruct a very complex defect. For example, if you remove a section of the jaw and tongue up here, you might use a piece of skin as well as the underlying bone from the fibula in the leg and use that fibula bone to reconstruct the mandible. Uh, it's, it's really amazing the, um, the cancers that we're able to uh, reconstruct. And so very complex defects like that are, are pretty complex, require a big team and, and a lot of work to do. Um, but as you stop and think about it, um, you know, if you can kind of fill in a massive hole from um, uh, removing a large cancer, it's not too much of a stretch to learn how to move the soft tissues of the face around to, say, uh, make the jawline look a little neater and take care of that extra tissue you don't like under the neck or the poofiness under the eyes. And so it's sort of a natural outgrowth of our ability to reconstruct the, uh, the head and neck defects. Nowadays, uh, many doctors like myself that are interested in pursuing um, higher levels of, of care in uh, facial plastic and reconstructive surgery um, go in and end up sitting for a whole separate board examination. So there's the American Board of Otolaryngology and then also the American Board of Facial Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery. And you can sit for both of those boards. There, uh, of course, the, the facial plastics boards are much more in depth. Um, it's also a, a two-day ordeal with a written test and oral examination and, and all the rest. And so um, that just kind of, uh, we use that as a way to not only make sure that um, all the, the board members are, are well trained, but also as an indication of the, uh, the depth and, um, of your training and expertise. So um, uh, in my practice, um, I focus primarily on, well, actually all different manners of um, both reconstructive as well as cosmetic surgery. So uh, I have a, a very busy rhinoplasty practice where we work both with um, noses that don't breathe well, uh, as well as noses that maybe don't look quite the way their, um, their owners might like, as well as uh, skin cancer reconstruction, frequently working with some of the uh, dermatologic Mohs surgeons in the area. And then of course, um, addressing regular cosmetic complaints, whether that be um, saggy skin, uh, um, saggy eyelids, um, that kind of thing. So uh, we'll deal with many of those topics in, in other videos, but uh, I hope this explains a little bit more about how um, otolaryngologists and facial plastic surgery come together and um, why it makes such a good match. Thanks.
Hey, thanks for watching this video. As always, this is meant to be general educational material and is not meant as specific medical advice for you or your family. If you have any concerns, please reach out to your doctor for appropriate medical advice. If you have any questions, please leave them down below and I'll answer them if at all possible. And uh, if you're interested in making an appointment, please look down below for more information on how to do so. Thanks for watching.